Hello everyone, Chris from Painting Glory here, and don't worry, I have not lost my mind. Although about half of these colors look familiar, you've been following my Viking painting tutorials, um, even the reds for some of the shields. What is going on with this neon jumble green, warlock purple, goblin green? I'm not painting Vikings today. We're going to mix it up, take a break from Vikings. We've done really well in the month of March, and we're going to take a break and do not just something in fantasy, but also something in a different scale. So I have this 15 millimeter figure. This happens to be a 3D printed uh, March to Hell Rome figure, and I'm here to compare him to some 10 millimeter fantasy figures. So this is a completely generic vampire in no way similar to anything from Games Workshop with the last name Von Karstein. And as you can see, if I line up their feet, we've either got a really, really teeny vampire or we're dealing in a different scale. This is a 10 millimeter figure from foot to eyeline. I measured it. It's actually closer to 10 and a half, but shh, it's close enough. Um, so I've painted up a couple of these just for fun. You may have seen them on my Instagram, Pain and Glory. Um, I also painted up this Bretonian Knight here, also in 10 millimeter scale. And one of the advantages of 10 millimeter scale is A, saves you a lot of space. Even compared to 15, these things are a little more than half the size. You can also make some really cool jumbo sized monsters that in 20 millimeter take would take hours and hours and days to paint like this zombie dragon and you can hold him in the palm of your hand and his tail got a little messed up there i glued it on uh back on uh or you can take figures when you're 3d printing like this graveyard golem which is a 28 millimeter figure which i wouldn't even be able to film this close up and scale it down so that it is roughly the same size, you know, a little bigger than this dragon, and you can rescale really big figures so that they can be next to your 10 millimeter figures. Now, I'm not gonna be painting undead or Bretonians today. We're gonna do a little tutorial on painting one of my favorite fantasy armies, the orcs. So what I have printed up here is I have some 10 millimeter orcs, uh, just, you know, kind of your standard, uh, angry slashy orcs and uh one of the bosses he's you know he's the boss because he's standing on a pile of skulls and uh, he's got a bigger axe and these are in 10 millimeter they come on a strip of five instead of a strip of six like a lot of uh human sized infantry because the boys are a little bit chunkier and we're going to paint them up and we're going to use some fun colors now the thing about orcs that i found sometimes is a lot of orcs especially if you're doing um fantasy orcs you're gonna be using a lot of browns and some beiges for their teeth and maybe some whites. And the, of course, green for the skin, but in 10 millimeter, you really gotta punch up a lot of your vibrant colors so they stand out because these are tiny, right? You can, you're not gonna be able to look at a 10 millimeter orc and see the exact same detail as a 28 millimeter orc. So you need your colors to go, mmm, pow. Really, someone needs to be able to look at the table from across and be like, look at that skin, look at the red, and this guy's got a cool little top knot thing here. So I'm like, you know what? I'm giving him a purple top knot because that's cool, and there's going to be a little pink in it because that'll make him really visible, and you know, that work means business. So I'm going to start here, as I usually do, working from the inside out. So the areas of these orcs that are hardest to get to are the skin. Now the faces are pretty easy to get to, and this is especially a point where I'm hitting a lot of their helmets, so I want to get the skin tone in there now, so I can go back later with the helmet, and the skin's already in there and I'm going on top of the skin. This is also a time where you can kind of explore your miniature. Now, I've 3D printed this and primed it twice, Xenothal, once with black and then once with white. So you can see from this, you can see kind of black on the undertones. From above, it's mostly white. Now, I wouldn't actually recommend rotating the mini like this while you're painting. You can save yourself a lot of time by just going down the front and hitting everything you think is skin, turning it around and going down the back and hitting everything that you think is skin. But for right now, I'm just kind of exploring these minis and you can take this time to explore the minis and try to identify what is this, what is that, because 
Uh, this was a test print. I definitely could get this higher quality, especially some of the um, details in the chest are a little hard to see. But once I get I, some paint on them, I think they'll be easier to see. And if I print another one, it'll be better. I'm going to be painting this. I'm going to put the skin on this. And then I'm going to be painting this guy off camera as I paint the regular boys. And at the end, we'll use his as an example how to really punch those highlights up in a way that I would for character, but not for my regular strips, because I might only paint five, ten characters, but I'm going to be painting dozens and dozens of these strips. I don't want to spend that kind of time. So we'll come back when the skin is done and we'll talk about what the next step is. So this next step is where you're going to have a lot of options and probably, unless you're doing something crazy, a lot of them are going to be very desaturated browns and tans. So with these orcs, they generally have three things going on. They have their pants, their shirts, although some of them have chainmail, and then they've got their bits. You know, some of them have belts, these little money pouches. Of course, they also have boots. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I have gathered a couple of different colors, and I'm going to go from bottom to top. So I want gradually to have the darkest colors on the bottom and then draw attention with the lighter colors to the top of the figure. So I've got a couple different browns here. My leather brown is a little bit darker than my monster brown. So my leather brown is going to be the pants, and I'm also going to go ahead and do the leather boots in that color. Then I have the shirts. The shirts I'm going to do in this dingy German camouflage beige World War II. So they're very differentiated from the leather brown. It's going to look like some sort of dirty off-white color in that case. Use whatever off-white you want to use. I could have used skeleton bone, and I'm going to say that for the teeth because I don't want the teeth to blend in with the shirts. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to hit the things between them with a color that's between them in tone, uh, and that's monster brown. So the belts, the uh, the money bags, and I'm also going to use monster brown to hit the wooden parts of their shields. So you can see a lot of their shields look like planks that have been attached. Some of them have chain mail that's kind of stuck on there or little icons um, or made out of bone. And so I'm going to hit the shields both on the inside and on the outside, the wooden parts with this monster brown color. I also have here fur brown. If there's anything else in there that I think should be a different brown color with a little more red, I might hit with fur brown. It's going to depend on what sculpts you have. So I'm going to go through and do all of the clothing before we come back and then we start doing some of the accessories and the colorful bits. So we are done with the leather and the cloth and the wood. And as you can see, a lot of these earth tones look kind of samey. We're going to solve a little bit of that when we get to the highlight stage after the wash. But now we're moving on to the metal. Now, these are your regular orc boys. They don't have a ton of metal. Uh, you can see some of these sculpts, which, by the way, I forgot to mention are Wake's Emporium 10 millimeter orcs. Um, some of their shields uh, have a little bit of chain mail on them. Uh, this guy's got a little bit of a chainmail skirt over here on the right. Uh, some of them have helmets. Of course, they all have weapons. There's some uh, studs. And then this guy over here, some of them have these like little metal shin guards. And so there's a little chainmail over here. There's not a ton of metal on these guys. With orcs, you know, they're not the best at maintaining their equipment. Normally, I would recommend you go with a dark metal, like gun metal. But when you're dealing in 10 millimeter or smaller scales in general, you generally want to go a step up in brightness because everything's going to be smaller. And when some things are smaller, they reflect less light and thus they look darker. And so I'm actually going to go with a plate mail metal, which is what I would use for, say, human higher quality weaponry on 28 millimeter. Um, but I'm going to use on the orcs here so it is brightened up. As a quick reminder, with metallic paints, absolutely do not use your good brushes or water to thin them down. That is bad. You want to use a brush that you exclusively use for metallics because those metal flakes will get in here. And then if you go to paint something blue, you're like, why are there shinies in my brush? Well, because the, the metal paint. So I've marked these off with some painter's tape today. Say, hey, look at this thing. See my blue brush? That's my metallics brush. I'm also using a matte medium. It looks kind of like PVA glue. I promise it's not. Um, to thin down this metal. Now, this is where you're going to have to be really careful, especially on 10 millimeter figures, because those helmets are tiny. And so getting metal on the face is going to be a big pain in the butt to clean up. So go in there and let's attack some of the easy stuff first, like this big old shield and the weapons and then the helmets, and we'll come back and we'll pick out some of the little itty bitty details around the orcs before we start getting into our fun colors 
and then a wash. So with all the metal done, it's time to do just a couple of little details that are around. We're gonna do in two colors, skeleton bone for bone and teeth, and then I'm gonna be using mummy robe for stitching, kind of my off-white color. And it looks very bright, it looks very white, but it's going to dull down when we apply a wash. This is the point at which you wanna get out the really good brush with the fine tip, because we are gonna pick out the teeth on these guys. They also have fairly prominent tusks. Some of them have uh, decorative bone bits that are here and there. And then again, for the stitching, a lot of their shirts have these big, really obvious patch stitch marks on them. So I'm gonna go in with the mummy robe and do that. When we're done, we'll come back and we'll do some of the red colors and talk about how we can really punch these guys up so they're not just all earth tones. Now we're done, or at least almost done. We've got all of the base colors down on these orcs, except the fun ones. This is where we're gonna go in, because again, remember, these things are tiny. A 28 millimeter figure is gonna be about that big. So I need to put a big pop of color on them. Now the skin's gonna be a big one of that. We're gonna highlight that after we put a wash on, which is our next step. But I wanna go in and hit all these little tiny things that are kind of their icons and it's you can see this guy here in the middle he's got kind of a little skull belt buckle that's going to be bright red this guy's got something going on in his belt over on the right that's going to be bright red i'm going to draw red stripes on some of their shields uh the guy with the top knot his top knot i'm actually gonna make his top knot purple because that's just fun. Um, I might go in here and see if there's any fun things going on back here, although in these particular orcs case it doesn't look like it. So you want to find every little thing that you can make red so that they have something to distinguish them so they're not all just green and brown and tan. Now while I'm doing this I'm also going to go in. You're of course going to pick your basing scheme um, that you'd like to. I'm going with kind of like an arid wasteland look so I'm going to lay down some uh, green brown and then some Iraqi sand on top of that. Uh, normally I'd uh, dry brush it but there's not really anything to dry brush in here so i'm gonna green brown the bottom and then iraqi sand just some of the raised edges and when i actually base this at a later date then i can do some dry brushing brushing on whatever basing material i'm gonna do so i've got my red here and again you want your real good brush here go in and we're gonna even highlight this later it's tiny but i want this thing to be screaming look at me I'm a red bed belt buckle because we're orcs and orcs is the best. And then this guy's got, I don't even know what this is. I think it's just a regular belt buckle. Guess what? Now it's a red belt buckle. You could go in and if you wanted, you could do some face paint as well. This guy on the outside, because he's on the outside, he's going to get a red stripe on his shield just because red is the best. And the cool thing is they're orcs too, so it doesn't really need to be all that clean looking because orcs are not known for their fine painting skills. So I'm just going to go th throw a couple red, messy lines on that. And now he's got red stripies on his shield. Do I want to do face paint? I think we're going to not do face paint on these guys. Just looking around, is that it? I think that might be it. It's not a lot, but it adds a little bit of color to them that when you're staring at them from far away, it's going to really help them out. I'm going to finish up the basing. Purple hair on the one guy with hair. And then we'll talk about washes. So we've reached the point in our painting now where it's time to apply a wash. Now, you could, there are a variety of washes out there that you could apply, but primarily you're gonna have a black wash, dark tone for army painter, a brown wash, strong tone, and then a light brown or sepia wash, like soft tone. And which wash you use is really up to you. Now I have painted these orcs with light earth tones. And I went with light color specifically because I knew I wanted to use the strong tone to darken them down. This dark tone would make everything very black, this soft tone doesn't have an extremely strong effect. This is going to mute them down a lot, which is why we are going to come back afterwards and really blow those reds and greens and the one guy with his purple hair out of the water 
after this tone is on. Now I have also, just to reduce the effect of the strong tone a little bit, mixed in some quick shade mixing medium. So in a roughly three to one or three to two ratio. And so we're just gonna go in and we're gonna apply it all over. You can immediately see, obviously it will dry, that it's gonna darken down that shield. It's gonna get into the, the wood board textures going to get into the face so we can really start to see some of those facial details. One of the other good effects of this too, because we're using this brown wash instead of a black, is it's going to make their armor, what little armor they have, and their weapons look really dirty, which for orcs is great. This is also something where if you're making two armies, and eventually I'm going to make an undead army as well, I wouldn't use the same wash because then the undead and the orcs would look very similar. So when I start doing my undead, I'm going to use a different wash that's going to give them a different color tone. This is a warm brown color tone for my orcs. Whereas the undead, I'm going to want to give them a cooler color tone with a bit of maybe a hint of blue or grays in it. So we're probably going to want to go with a, uh, a dark tone or maybe even a custom wash with a little bit of blue mixed into it. So I'm gonna finish these orcs up. We'll come back when it's fully dried, which can take 30 minutes to an hour. And then we'll talk about how we're gonna highlight uh, everything on the orcs, but with a special focus on their, of course, distinctive green skin and also the red accents and a little bit of purple accents that we threw in there. So now that the shade has had about an hour to dry and we've darkened this down, it's time to start bringing it back up. You also may have noticed I missed a little skull in this guy's helmet, so I went back in with a little bit of red to clean that up. But for right now, I've got my three primary uh, colors for highlights here. So for their cloth shirts, I'm going to be using German Camo Beige. That's the same I used on them before, but now we need to highlight them back up. We also have Monster Brown for some of the leather bits and the wood. And then we have skeleton bone, which is going to be for any bone material on, the, on their uh, shields uh, or for their little itty bitty tusks. So for the German camo beige, really with this, all you need to do is locate where they have the cloth, like say this guy's kind of little tunic here, and just put a little bit in the corners or any really obvious raised edges, you don't really need to do a lot. Now it looks really obvious there, but when it dries, it's not gonna look quite so obvious. This guy on the left, his tabard or tunic is kind of hanging down, so I'm, it's hanging, hiding behind that shield, so I don't need to do that much. If I turn him over, the back is where you're gonna see a lot. So we can really just kind of hit these kind of raised bits on their shoulders. Not really sure what those were supposed to be. They should have been another color. And then again, we're just doing very stylized highlights on the edges of things. When it dries, it won't look nearly so dramatic. His shoulders, so it looks like it's brighter on top. You also notice that stitching that we put in mummy robe, that really bright off-white, has now really been dinged up, so it looks kind of like dirty cloth. So that's why we did that. This guy, his stitching actually ended up not being dirty cloth. I didn't like the look of it, so I'll highlight that with my German camo. And then this final little character over here. The monster brown here on the back, I really want to differentiate the two different browns I have, the leather brown of the pants and the monster brown of the belts and these pouches. Now they look very similar because they are fairly close. And I could have gone with a darker brown for the pants, but I didn't want it to be too dark. So my plan was, if I go in with the monster brown and just do a little bit of highlight on these pouches and on these belts, they'll really stand out against the darker brown, especially now that it's had a wash on it. 
of the pants. And it doesn't take that much work to just put a little dab and a little line on the center of these pouches. And then where the wash is kind of in the recesses between the pouches, it stays like that. It stays the darker. Now the shields I also did in leather brown. So I can take this and just kind of run it along the upper outer edge. Like so there's some light reflecting off. And then if I want to clean up these panels to make them look a little bit more differentiated, you can kind of dab in on the wooden planks, but definitely leave some dark in between them. This guy's shadow's pretty far in there, so I don't need to do that much. And then for this one on the end, I think I'm gonna leave the dark paneling in the middle dark, because I'm gonna highlight up the red. This isn't strictly necessary, but it does help punch them up a little bit because they do have a lot of dark tones in there. The last thing is gonna be my skeleton bone for their tusks or whatever bone color. And here's where you're really just gonna go in and just the very end of the tusk, just a little, little boop. Boop right on the end there. Be careful around that sword. There we go. So it's just a little bright spot on the end of the tusk. You're going more for impressionistic in 10 millimeter. You're not painting every little itty bitty tiny detail. You're just saying, hey look, those are bone colored. Those are their tusks. Or for this guy here on the end, he's got a shield with some sort of, you know, I don't know what it is. It looks like a bone. I painted it as a bone. I wasn't really 100% sure. Some sort of jawbone of a giant creature. Go in there, there are a couple highlights on it. So we're done with these colors. After this, now we can really start highlighting the skin. Now for these characters, I'm just gonna highlight the skin with one pass of my original Goblin Green. At the end of this, I'll come in, and I've been painting this character off screen and I'll show you how we can punch the character figure up a notch. So take your Goblin Green, and this is where, again, you really want to get your nice, fine-tipped brush here, because this is where, that wasn't fully mixed, this is where we really want to hit the details on the face. That's better. I have to mix this better. I've thought about looking into a vortex machine, but I have not yet to help mix up these paints. And I'm thinning it down with just a little bit of water and a little bit of medium. I want this nice and thin, but not so much water that it's just gonna run off the brush. Although if you do get too much water, see this is fine. That's not too much water, it's not out of control. If you do have too much water, you can always wick it off like that. Notice I didn't really get much off there because it's not that fluid. The paper doesn't just start wicking it away because there's not too much fluid in it. It's a good test of how much fluid, how much water is in there. So we're going in, we're gonna hit this guy in the end. The guys in the end, we wanna just hit the major muscle groups. So you can see there are muscles sculpted onto his arm. And so I just wanna exaggerate the muscles. Don't go in between the muscles. Leave what little shade is in there, in there. Just hitting the muscle groups so that we're exaggerating the definition between the muscles. This is how we're gonna get our contrast. Same on this guy's arm. The back of the hand. The raised parts of the arm, maybe a little back here on the elbow. 
Now, I'm not going to do those fingers behind the shield because no one's going to see him. That would be impossible. And I'm not going to do the fingers on his hand. You can if you want to go crazy. But what I did is because I primed these guys with a Zenithal highlight, the fingers on the hand, you'll notice they're already noticeably lighter because I allowed the slight translucency of the paint to allow that white undercoat to show through and thus the fingers already have a natural highlight. Now, this guy's not a good example of what to do on this face because his face is pretty covered by the shield. So I'm going to move to this next guy. Start on the back. I want to hit. He's got kind of this bony ridge on the back of his head and his ears. So I'm going to hit his ears. I'm going to hit this bony ridge. I don't want to cover the whole top of his head in the new paint because then I'll lose the definition. But then I'm going to come back around. I'm going to hit the front of his forehead and try to just brush my paint up against kind of his eyebrow ridges. And a little dab above his mouth. This guy in the middle, he doesn't have a lot of face showing, so I'm just going to kind of hit in between his tusks. And actually, here's a good example. Oh, I missed something. These horns, I forgot to paint those horns. Those should be skeleton bones, so I'm going to have to fix that. But here, you can hit kind of his under wrist and his muscle group. And I think you get the idea. At this point, I need to go through and I need to do the rest of the skin without the camera so I can finish it up without messing it up. And then we'll come back and we'll talk about cleaning up any of the other colors like the red and the mohawk and also the metal. So after finishing filming the last shot, I realized after the goblin green had dried is that it actually didn't really hide a mite, highlight as much as I thought it had. So I did my next step on my regular orcs. Rather than highlighting in just the base goblin green, I mixed in a little bit of this jungle green. Now, if you don't have jungle green, you can also mix in just yellow. A little bit of yellow into green will turn it into kind of a lighter lime green. And then I went back into the main orcs, and now you can really see the details of their face and their muscle groups and their necks stick out. I did that on the same on this character. Now, with the characters only, with the characters only, I'm now going to go back in and do another highlight on the skin with a mix of jungle green and goblin green. My original mix was a roughly 2 to 1 of goblin and jungle. Now this ratio is going to be more like a 50-50 or maybe even slightly more jungle than goblin green or whatever greens you're using. And I'm going to come in the character and really do the same thing, but I want to keep the areas that I'm highlighting smaller. So I want the original goblin green that was shaded in the largest areas, the mix of jungle and goblin original in the second largest areas, and then on this bicep, just a little dab of my most extreme highlight. Same on his thumb here, a little bit on his forearm, on the back of his elbow here. You can see it's the dark green and then the light green and then just a little bit of the very lightest green here in the middle. Elbow. And then this particular sculpt has some fairly meaty fingers. I did not do any highlighting of fingers on the regular orcs because down that path lies madness. But on this figure, you can see some of these fingers, and so I can put a little dab, just a little dab, where his knuckles are. And then come back and hit his face. Just a little on his brow and the tips of his ears. His other ears kind of hit him back here on the top of his head. Uh, it's kind of like orcish. It's almost more of a snout than a nose. And I got it. Now you can really see that face from across the table because you're going to see the broad facial structure in the light green with the shadows in the dark green. From here, we're going to come back in and we're going to highlight the red 
First, I'm gonna do a little bit of pure red, my original red, and then because I really want this red to pop out, I'm gonna go up to a scarlet. If you wanna mix your own scarlet, take a red, and then take a little bit of orange, and you can get a scarlet, a really nice bright red. If you mix in white, it's gonna go pink. If you wanna go that way, that's fine. And then for my one guy with the fun hair color, he's gonna get a purple, and then I'm gonna highlight that up to this warlock purple, which is really more of a purpley pink. And then the last step, is we'll come back and we'll hit the weapons so they have a nice sheen to them. Going to the very end here, we're gonna give our metallic parts just a little bit of a highlight right along the edges. So you're gonna find your orcs and you're gonna look for the edges of their swords, of their axes. You can kinda, of, instead of going up and down, you can go from side to side so it doesn't look so even, like it's kind of pitted. You might want to do this a little bit, just a little dab on the top of their helmets or on the sides of their helmets. And if they have these, some of them have these little metal shin guards, you could just hit the very top of the shin guard, like the light is reflecting off of it. And you can pretty much call it a day on these orcs. This guy's got a fun shoulder pad. That should be a little shiny there on the back. Not too shiny. Just a little shiny. And that's it. We're done with these orcs. I'll take a nice shot of them in my light booth, post them up, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you paint 10 millimeter orcs from War Master. These are Wake's Emporium 3D printed. Again, if you look super close at them, some of the details look a little mushy, I don't have the best 3D printer, but also remember these are 10 millimeter figures. You're gonna be looking at them from this far away and compared to an actual orc figure, which I don't have handy, but I have this World War I British officer. You can see there's a huge difference in their height. And so you can see, you don't need to hit the detail, it's more impressionistic. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. My next video on painting 10 millimeter, because I'm gonna do another one before I go back to Vikings. We're gonna do the Legions of the Undead and they're gonna be even quicker than this. So keep on painting and have fun.